Hey everyone, this video is about the five reasons in favor of buying a late model R1200GS uh, that is uh, 2014 and above. Why you might want to get one. Now personally, I bought a 2018 R1200GS Adventure Rally. Um, I love the color scheme on that thing. Um, that was half the reason that I bought it. But I'm going to go into five reasons why I think a 2014 and above, and if you can swing it, 2017 and above, R1200 GS is a good value proposition nowadays. This video is not a review of, the, of my 2018 R1200 GS adventure. Stick around for the end. Uh, I'll have a little bonus section which is going to cover why I chose the adventure over the standard model and why I chose the R1200 over the 1250. Reason number one, the R1200 GS is easy to ride. I'm going to caveat that though. Um, you can't be vertically challenged. Personally, I'm six foot two, 187 centimeters, and I can get both feet down on my adventure in the low seat position. I keep it in the low seat position. I think the uh, seat height in low is 890 centimeters around that area. The first reason that it's easy to ride is that amazing, magical telelever front suspension. It, this bike is something unique. This, if you've never ridden a telelever suspension before, there is absolutely no brake dive when you're braking hard. You slam on that brake, no dive whatsoever. It's uncanny. It's like driving a car. It takes some getting used to. Now, the other reason that makes it easy to ride is the awesome ESA suspension by Saks. It irons the road flat under your wheels. In road mode, uh, it's super, super comfortable. Um, but you can still ride really fast in road mode, but you don't feel the road. Like with my Tracer 700, I was hopping all over the road. Uh, if I got a bad road in the Black Forest, uh, and uh, it made me uncomfortable and the bike totally unstable. It upset the bike. This doesn't happen in road mode. It's like you're gliding over the road, the bad roads. Now, if you want to pick up the pace, you have the option of dynamic, and that really makes a difference. The difference between road and dynamic is night and day. The other reason that makes it very easy to ride is it's super low center of gravity. The bike is well balanced and it's pretty much weightless at walking pace. If you're riding it at walking pace, you know, feathering the clutch a little bit, this heavy bike feels like nothing. I mean, it's, the weight distribution is excellent. Another reason that it's easy to ride is the high speed stability. So it's got a steering damper on it, of course, but on the Autobahn, when you're going 150, 160 kilometers plus, uh, it's a heavy bike, so it's planted. It's got this planted feeling. Uh, you blow by trucks, uh, the turbulence off of the trucks, you don't feel a thing. You just blow right by. I have to say, uh, because of the low center of gravity, awesome brakes and the electronic suspension, uh, and the tele telelever front end, this massive bike is easier to ride quickly and smoothly than my Tracer 700 was. It just takes all skill out of the equation, pretty much. That's how they've uh, ironed this bike out. The number two reason uh, in favor of a late model R1200GS or Adventure is that amazing boxer engine. And uh, let me caveat that. The boxer engine with the shaft drive. Uh, there's no other way, obviously, that you can get a boxer engine. Now, some people don't like the boxer engine. I don't understand that. I think it's an amazing engine, and I'll tell you why. It has character. No other manufacturer out there makes a boxer engine. It's uh, got the two jugs that stick out of the side. It looks a little bit like an aircraft if you look at it. Um, that's, that's what it reminds me of. Then that side-to-side -side shake on startup and that smooth linear power when you're uh, putting the throttle on. It gives enough feedback that you know a 1200cc engine is below you, is underneath you, and it's rumbling away. It's got a feeling. And uh, let's, let's talk about that torque. 
my goodness, this bike has torque in every rev range. I mean, it's uh, once you get to the top, it uh, flattens out a bit, but I mean, 92 pounds feet of torque, 125 newton meters everywhere. The torque on this bike is amazing. Uh, the uh, bike has a slipper clutch for smooth downshifts, which is awesome when you're banging down the gears before a hairpin. You don't have to worry about your rear wheel stuttering out. The other thing is I hate chain cleaning. I, I know it's necessary for a lot of bikes, and uh, I know the shaft drive. You lose a little bit of power on it. But the last thing you want to do when you're on a tour and you're at the hotel is wheel your bike around a little bit in the parking lot or put it on a center stand and start getting messy with a uh, chain lubing or chain cleaning. Uh, wouldn't you rather be sitting in the Gusthof drinking a beer? I would. So the uh, shaft drive is awesome. Love it. The soundtrack of the GS engine is excellent, I think. Some people uh, liken it more to farting, uh, the crackles and pops. I mean, it's it, it definitely has a bit of a um, flatulence to it, that's for sure. Um, but the sound of a GS, that low rumble, it's unique. A GS is just unmistakable. So that all ties in with the boxer engine and the shaft drive combination. And that was reason number two. Reason number three is the electronics. The electronics on this bike, state of the art. My 2018, for instance, has all the electronics, uh, well, 98% of electronics that the uh, R1250 GS has. So my last bike was super, super basic. Tracer 700 had only ABS. I wanted to see if electronics really play a role in the riding experience. And I have to say they do. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed is when you're changing the riding modes, the difference between road mode and dynamic in terms of the throttle response is instantly noticeable. I prefer to ride my bike now in uh, dynamic because I think the road mode, um, the throttle response is a bit too, uh, let's say, weak. Uh, you, you have to give it a little bit more throttles. It doesn't have the sensitivity that dynamic does. I would say dynamic is closer to a cable throttle, in my opinion, at least the way the Tracer 700 was, except it doesn't have the twitchiness. It doesn't have the twitchiness that uh, some Yamaha or Japanese models do, where they're on-off throttle. It has none of that, but it's very sensitive. So the other thing in terms of electronics has a lot of safety features. The 2017 model has ABS Pro, which is basically cornering ABS. It's got an IMU-based uh, dynamic traction control, and the bike has the emergency, uh, intelligent emergency calling feature. So if the bike falls over, you're in an accident, uh, there's a SIM card installed that's, you know, you don't have to pay a monthly fee or anything. It automatically calls BMW. Uh, BMW will call you back and check to make sure you're okay if you have an accident or the bike falls over or whatever else uh, sets it off, which is a cool feature. And you talk right into the bike. You don't need a headset connected or anything like that. The uh, 2018 models also started getting the TFT. So you'll see my bike here has the TFT, which is just amazing. The uh, TFT is such a nice dash. Tons of re reviewers have already gushed over it. Um, I don't need to say anything more about that. The bike also has ESA electronic suspension, which uh, will self-level the suspension settings depending on the load. That means that um, I don't have to say, oh, two riders and luggage, or one rider and luggage, or one rider solo. The bike, as soon as you sit on it, the luggage is packed, it knows exactly what settings to set. It's a self-leveling suspension which is awesome. So I don't have to deal with uh, setting the uh, preload adjuster on the wheel and that sort of thing for what I think it should be. Nope, it does it automatically, which is really nice. Then it's got the quick shifter, which is great. Nice to bang up and down the gears. Keyless ignition, also super comfortable to have. Cruise control for the Autobahn and something very important. Tire pressure monitors. I'll tell you, I'm the type of rider 
that always checks their tire pressure before they go out for a ride. And this is just a safety thing that you should do. The R1200 GS Adventure has a tire pressure monitor built in. So it will tell you exactly what your tire pressure is. And if it's low, it'll warn you. This is a great safety feature. I don't know why more bikes don't have it. The fourth reason in favor of an R12, a late model R1200 GS is the value, the reliability, and the warranty. I'm just going to go quickly on this one here. Everybody knows that BMW GSs hold their value extremely well. They're very well sought after on the used market. If you can find a bike that is taken care of with a complete service record, you can resell the bike several years on with little loss. If you buy used, uh, the original buyer already took the hit on the depreciation. And GSs are reliable, I'll tell you. If you look on the classifieds here in Europe, there's so many high mileage bikes for sale, BMW GSs, uh, that have 60, 100, 150, 200, 250,000 kilometers. These bikes are ridden. They're ridden hard. These are the bikes that the long distance riders take. So that's why it's not uncommon that you see bikes with well over 100,000 kilometers. And the other thing is in Germany, BMW requires all dealers to include a full one year warranty on any used BMW um, from an official dealer if you buy it from a BMW dealer and you have the option to uh, further extend it yearly afterwards. So if you have any concerns about warranties um, and you're in Europe, then no problem at all. Now, in the US, it's gonna be a little bit different. It depends on your state, lemon laws, that sort of thing. Now, the fifth and final reason uh, that I bought a R1200 GS late model is that it's just an icon. I mean, Come on, guys. This bike is considered by many to be the best motorcycle in the world. I wanted to see what all the fuss was about, so I figured, you know, I've got my experience. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Japanese bikes, and I had a Moto Guzzi for a while. Now I want to see what all the fuss is about, so I bought myself this BMW GS Adventure. Now, I'm not going to mention Charlie, Borman, and Ewan McGregor. That's all been done to death. This is the large capacity adventure bike that all others are compared against. Even the Ducati Multistrada V4S, it's been out for a while now, in 2023. Um, everybody keeps on coming back to, is it as good as the GS? So that alone so, says a lot about its iconic status. Another thing is, if you're here in Europe and you're on a mountain pass, you're I'm in the Alpine passes in Europe, you'll be seeing GS is everywhere. They're the most common. Why would somebody choose a big fat elephant to ride up hairpins in the Alps? Why? Because it's so damn good. The low center of gravity, the way the telelever works, it is so easy to ride. And for good reason, the BMW 1200 GS has been Motorrad Magazine's uh, Alpen Master winner for five years in a row. Motorrad Magazine is a, a German uh, motorcycle magazine. Five years in a row. 2016, even in the U.S., 2016, Motorcycle Magazine's Bike of the Year. And uh, the 27 and 2018 model year has a five out of five star rating at MCN, so the English publication. Okay, so at this point in the video, I'm going to talk about why I chose the Adventure over the Standard model. So again, I have a 2018 R1200 GS Adventure Rally. The Rally Edition means that it had initially had um, some more off-roady things, uh, meaning uh, it had a Rally seat and a smaller screen. I've got the Standard seat on it and the standard adventure screen. So basically mine's a, an adventure, but it has an awesome rally paint scheme. So why the adventure? First of all, the adventure has more road presence. I mean, it's a big, big bike. And when you're coming, people see you coming. So that was very important to me. 
Um, I actually think the R1200 GS Adventure looks better than the standard model also. Something about the big tank and the uh, crash bars and just the large size of it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Bowser from Mario Brothers. So it's like the Bowser of motorcycles. The other reason is it has a massive 30 liter or 7.9 gallon tank. And this tank is amazing. I mean, I have gotten, personally, I've gotten over 600 kilometers on one tank. That's over 370 miles. Crazy. The Adventure is also more comfortable for a tall rider. You're sitting up a little bit higher. Uh, the seat height is a little higher, a little more leg room. It's got more suspension travel uh, which mean, than the standard GS. Now, they do have standard GSs in the Rally Edition with the uh, taller suspension, but this one gets its stock. The Adventure gets its stock, the tall suspension, so it makes it more off-road capable should I choose to take it off-road. Um, it also has the standard cross-spoked wheels, which look awesome with tubeless tires. Uh, it looks better and less prone to damage if you take the bike off-road. I think the spoked wheels look better. Also, the bike has better weather protection with its big tank, um, and it's also got additional wind deflectors on the bodywork. So um, all this works in your favor if you're doing high-speed, long-distance touring. It already includes the engine protection, luggage racks, and larger enduro foot pegs, as well as the aux lights, uh, the auxiliary lights, which are a safety feature in my opinion. I leave them on all the time, and I would have added them anyways. And the final reason that I went for the adventure is I think it's got the best color scheme ever. The white rally with the blue frame looks awesome. So why did I not choose the newer R1250 GS? There's something to be said about the uh, more basic engine uh, without the shift cam. It basically arrived at perfection in the 2018-2017 model because uh, the 2017 Euro 4 update of the R1200 GS line um, brought improved bodywork for aerodynamics and cooling and, uh, more importantly, mechanical drivetrain updates. So it has a smoother uh, final drive and a smoother gearbox. So there's a significant difference between the um, post-2017 R1200s and the pre-2017 liquid cools in terms of the uh, slickness of the gearbox and the final drive. Now my 2018 has nearly everything that the uh, 1250 has, uh, of course minus the shift cam, which uh, brings slightly better gas mileage, I'll admit it, 11 more horsepower and about 13 pound-feet of torque. Now Apparently, it does give a little bit boost, a little bit of a boost up in the higher rev ranges and maybe a little bit down low. From everything that I've seen, the difference is not that drastic, plus it adds complexity. And then there's a couple of new electronic things that the 1250 has, has that my 2018 does not have. So I don't need the dynamic brake control, which prevents uh, opening the throttle while you're braking. I, I do that with my hand. That's, that's basic uh, riding stuff. You don't need that. Um, I don't need a heated seat because I can always add an aftermarket one. I don't need the adaptive headlights um, because I rarely, if ever, ride at night. Um, and, uh, you know, in the when you're looking at the 2019, 2020, uh, 1250s, the used ones, uh, a lot of those had uh, teething issues. Like there have been reports of they, they switched over from the Brembos to the Hayes brakes, and some of those Hayes brakes have been leaky. Um, and there's uh, complaints about engine rattle and things like that. Now, all of that has probably been ironed out over the years with the latest 1250 models. But here's the other thing, and this is the big one. 1200s uh, have uh, depreciated, and they hold their value. Now, with the 1250s, um, they're significantly several thousand uh, euros or dollars more uh, for used models, but then... Um, the, uh, here in 2023, beginning of 2023, the R1300 and R1400 models are rumored and there's spy shots of them and they're going to be released either this year, 2023 or 2024. And, uh, and those 1250s are definitely all going to go sink a little bit in value 
well, I think the 1200s are going to stay relatively stable um, because everybody and everybody's going to dump their 1250s. Um, The market will be saturated and flooded with 1250s at that time when everybody's jumping ship to the new 1300 and 1400. So I would have taken more of a financial hit if I got a R1250 and then resold it if I decided uh, I wanted to move to another bike later on down the road because you're still paying a premium for the latest and greatest of the BMW, uh, even if it's used. And those are the reasons why I decided on the 1200. It's got pretty much everything that the 1250 has, minus the shift cam. It's got all the electronics, the uh, TFT, all the great stuff that you need, and nothing that you don't. And it was smarter financially. And there you go. Thanks for watching.